Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video we're going to look at is cryptocurrency in a bear market. Now I've just put up a two hour live stream with you guys. So if you've seen that, this is a recap, but in a condensed version, I just want to cover off some of the main topics we talked about, some of the main cryptos, some of the main ideas which I see coming forward during this next period of the bull market. Now, I've asked, are we in a bear market? We're going to look at that in just a sec. So if you like the channel, it's the first time here, let me know, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon, like the video up if you find some value from it. Let's dive in. We had a two hour live stream, as I mentioned in the intro, and I thought there was just so much good information in it. I want you guys to at least get some of the snippets out of it and I'm putting it into this video. We talked a bit about the Solana ecosystem, in particular Solana itself, how that has just been going on a mega run during the dip in the Bitcoin price. So that stands out to me a lot and it is one of my major holdings. SRM, Ray, FTT, these are all part of the ecosystem. Having said that, FTT, which is the FTX exchange, isn't directly linked, but it does have a lot to do with the entire ecosystem as the founder. Uh, is also part of this project over here in Solana. So you've got Sam, the founder of FTX Exchange and Alameda Research. This is all part and parcel in the same ecosystem and they look like they're gonna be doing really, really big things. Well, they already have done big things, but it is only now that it's starting to come out into the marketing space across YouTube and Twitter and, and all the rest of it, which is where people are starting to see the huge potential in the space as a potential competitor to say the BSC, the Binance Smart Chain, not a competitor to Ethereum, is going to work alongside Ethereum. And so that's the beauty about this project. We also looked at Bitcoin and where that's sitting currently after it's 11 days down. It has gone down 11 days and today in the last few hours we've just seen Bitcoin start to creep up a little bit, hitting around 52,500 at the time of this video. So we'll check that, and that out in the chart as well and we've also recapped in the live stream uh, all of the price data and the price analysis along the way throughout that journey of 11 days down. Ethereum, we're going to talk about some large caps, how the marketing is easier. That's what we're talking about in the video. And uh, sponsored small caps, exiting crypto plan, upcoming trends. I see that in the DeFi space and of course the Solana ecosystem. And then lastly, just a few of these links. So let's move first to the market caps. Coming back to that $2 trillion market cap, we're at 1.9 trillion. Bitcoin, 975. Ethereum has seen about a 9% increase over the last seven days. However, in the last 24, it's gone up 11%. Go figure. Now, 24 hours, we've got Bitcoin at 4%, BNB 8%. The big, big winners here. Solana has been doing very well. Last seven days, 52% and 13 over the last 24 hours. Now, I've got highlighted here Cardano, uh, VeChain. I'm going to have a quick look at that as well, just as we will with Cardano. I've got a video just a couple of days ago. You can go and check this out, which is more detail in Cardano uh, on, on its own. But at the moment, we're at $1.18 and our targets, we were looking at in the 80 cents. Now, it did spike down to about 89 cents. And this is just a wick if you're looking at candles. However, the close was up there at around a dollar, dollar nine, as you can see here on the coin market cap. Moving forward for Cardano, staking is still obviously in play. A lot of people like this as a longer term play. That's why I have it as a longer term play. Um, and especially with, obviously there's the Africa event coming up, but I think a long term people kind of want to have some sort of hedge against Ethereum. And this is starting to come out as a hedge against Ethereum, at least in the marketing space. Now, this is why we need to keep track of what they're actually doing and what's, what's being released in terms of the project. And that's what we'll keep a, a good eye on when it comes to Cardano. Overall, is the price going to go up? I think so. Staking rewards, still going to get our five or so percent on those. And I have a staking pool coming up as well. So that's another good advertisement spot for Cardano. VeChain, 18 cents. Everyone wants me to talk about VeChain. I see a bit of a fall from here. That's just straightforward. Looking at the tops of around 25 cents, it has taken off a fair bit, but maybe we'll see some sort of consolidation here. We want to see that at least to hold its levels so that we can form a base to take off again. Otherwise, it could be in trouble for the short term. Not going to get bearish on VeChain at this point in time. Again, it's like Cardano and XRP. They have these huge communities behind them that uh, people talk about them left, right and center. 
which helps the marketing aspect of them, especially when their coin's under a dollar. It's a very newbie sort of thing to want to get projects which are under a dollar, a few cents, can these things go to a dollar? That gets a lot of people's hopes up, marketing looks good. It's a good coin in that sense. Monero, update. So this is all the stuff that we were covering on the live stream. I didn't look at Monero. However, uh, privacy coins might be coming back into the spotlight a little bit. But the main thing I like with Monero is after it dumped through November, December into, I think it was January, this was a time where a lot of exchanges were delisting Monero. And this got the BTC price hammered. So it was starting to find its way up and it probably would have broken its all-time high by now uh, if it wasn't for exchanges delisting Monero. But now we see the BTC price starting to climb and it's coming back to a previous peak of about 0 0.006, so uh, about 67,000 Satoshis and we're back at that price now at around uh, 70, 70 odd thousand Satoshis. So that's a good sign that the, the Bitcoin value of uh, X MR Monero is recovering. So this is a privacy coin. As we know in the market, it's probably one of the best out there, if not the best, but there obviously are some competitors coming. This is a good thing for anonymity and the cryptocurrency space, uh, regardless of what you think about privacy and the rest of it in that space, which we'll leave there. FTX, $49. This, like I said, this is going to be part of the Solana ecosystem narrative, which I see doing very well leading into the Northern Hemisphere summer, which you guys in the Northern Hemisphere just call summer. For us, it's winter. But this is probably going to be part of the uh, Solana talk FTX or FTT is the token. If now take all of this together, if we don't see a correction and currently I can't see one just yet. Okay. In the dollar value, it is definitely getting a correction, but we are getting really, really high at this point and the ranges are starting to tighten. That to me means we might be coming towards an end in the short term, but I want to continue to follow this project. FTX is something that I'm not in yet and it's something that I'm happy to wait for a correction on so I can start to dollar cost averaging into this project. Speaking of the ecosystem, Solana is something that I have bought and it was on the breakout at around 30 odd dollars. So I'm in quite late, even though it's been around for a long time, a dollar 50 would have been a fantastic buy. But this ecosystem, I'll do a separate video on altogether. I'm doing more research on it. It is going to be the talk of the town moving forward. It has extremely fast transactions and that to me I see is going to be the narrative, especially as Binance possibly bloats and Ethereum doesn't scale and the fees continue to stay high. This is a layer one. And so it has what Ethereum needs, but it's not as decentralized. So that's why they're working together. That's why they will work together, not the companies, but the actual projects themselves. And it doesn't have to be a maxi approach where one will win and one loses. There is space for a lot of good projects. Currently Solana is at 13th place and it has the potential to get into that top 10, if not into the top five. So that's why I've got my eye solidly on Solana. That's why I'm invested in Solana, even if it dips from here. This is part of cryptocurrency. If your projects go down 13%, 27%, whatever it is, if you cannot wear that, you're probably not watching this for starters and you guys are probably getting sick of me talking about that, but you gotta get out of crypto. It's that simple. You just check the charts, review how far markets can drop and that's going to help you set up a plan for yourself so that you know moving forward if something drops against me after buying the top and it goes against me by 30 percent or 40 percent this is normal within a bull market crypto.com another one that i talk about a lot has had a nasty correction off that high as bitcoin was dropping and from that point it was at around 24 cents, dropped to 15 cents, and we're just starting to recover now at 17 to 18 cents. And long term, definitely got my eyes still on crypto.com. You know, I talk about it quite often. This is one that you can purchase from CoinSpot for the Aussies. So yeah, that's the only exchange here in Australia. SwiftX doesn't have it. However, SwiftX has the rest of these coins there. Uh, and you can find the link to those in the description down below. CRO debit card, really, really cool. And it has a lot of other features like that in terms of um, interest earning, and it has its exchange, uh, you can get loans from it, very easy to use, beautiful interface. I could go on like I always do, but this is the project here and if you want to store some of your gains on there, like your stable coins, 
up to 14%. I probably are going to be around that 10 to 12% because you need to stake a fair bit of CRO to get the 14. So around 10 to 12% on stable coins where you can put some of the profits next time the markets go up rather than freaking the hell out as they dip. That's why I always sell out some profits on the way up, put them into stable coins, stake it over on crypto.com or BlockFi is another option here and get your 8 to 12% interest back on those stable coins while you wait for another entry to use that money. Now you can have two of them set up so that you have your risk spread across two different platforms, just like you would with exchanges, setting up a coin spot account and a SwiftX account. So you have your risk spread across different exchanges and different uh, apps where you can hold your money. Now, Chainlink, another one which I was talking about in terms of a crypto that I was buying on the dip because its BTC value is doing quite well. It's holding up. We've seen a low, a higher low. We want to see another higher low form again. And this is looking strong for Chainlink. The yellow line is the Bitcoin value. I want to see it go up in Bitcoin value because I know long term, well, I believe long term that Bitcoin is going to increase in its dollar value. So if I can increase the Bitcoin value that I'm holding in another cryptocurrency, I'm going to do even better. And that's why I hold another cryptocurrency, not just for the US dollar uh, value increasing. And Link tends to move slightly differently to the market when it comes to its BTC value. It peaked out in August and found a bottom in January. Now we've gone sideways in some sort of potential, potentially, uh, accumulated area through here. I don't know if that was English, but it, you get what I'm saying. This is looking like an accumulation zone with the volume coming through. Let's see if we can break out of these highs and start to move on with the USD value and the BTC value. Uniswap is the last one I have here. Another great project. Version three is coming out in about a week's time, uh, maybe two weeks. But this is also signs, showing signs of breaking out into new all-time highs against the BTC value. And that's what we want to see. Long-term USD, I think we're going to see higher prices. I am uh, wary of a potential correction. So if that comes, I'm, I'm expecting it. If it doesn't come, great. That's all good. But I'm invested into Uniswap already. So it's not such a worry to myself at this point in this project. $18 billion market cap sitting at rank number nine. This will do well. These big cap projects is something that I talked about rotating into, especially when the market is a little bubbly or Bitcoin is down and the prices are looking reasonably good because they have held their Bitcoin value. Taking a look at Bitcoin like we did in the live stream, we've really recapped this 11 days down. This was the top that was put in on the 14th of April down to the low yesterday. Uh, which hit $47,000. And you know, if you watch the previous Bitcoin videos on the channel, how we called this, why we called this, the low that we're looking at, the 50% hit, all looking really, really good uh, in terms of a nice price cluster around that high $46,000 level. I wanted to get a little bit further down for new money to enter Bitcoin, my new money that is, to enter Bitcoin. I'm not too concerned about this one day up so far. We're only a few hours into the new trading day that anything could happen. This could end up closing down lower. It could close a hell of a lot higher. It could get rejected at 55 or 56, 54K and then come back and find a higher low. Overall, this is looking like a, a good short, at least short term bottom. Maybe it's a longer term bottom, uh, but I still have my eyes set on just a tad bit lower, especially after 11 days down. That's, that's unprecedented. We haven't seen 11 days down in Bitcoin's history. So I'm wanting to see what happens next from here. If we happen to get a V-shaped recovery and we go straight up, great. But I want to see volume come in. That is the criteria for me. I definitely want to see some volume. Otherwise, we'll end up with something a bit weak like we saw last time. This volume is not very high considering the previous, in comparison, sorry, to the previous tops, the previous breakouts. And ultimately, we dumped from that point. So if I get a breakdown from here into this area to test those low 40Ks, great. If we don't, we know what's happening and we know what's going on. So that was Bitcoin. The Bitcoin dominance has obviously uh, fallen to 50%. Now it's at 51.5%. Something we covered, we looked at for a long time, expecting that to hit our target, getting a bit of a rest. And then Ethereum we covered as well. USD coming close to two and a half grand again. It's very strong during this fall on Bitcoin. Top here at 24,080. 
ETH BTC value is the strong point here because as Bitcoin, as Bitcoin drops, the ETH BTC pair has continued to increase. The weak point here is the volume. The volume is not showing good signs as we begin to take off again. Uh, obviously, it's on Bitfinex, so the volume isn't the best on this exchange. But I'm just comparing it to previous days where we did see some strong volume. So I want to see the volume come back in if we're to take out these highs convincingly. That's where I sit with Ethereum, still looking like a really good hold. We'll get to 3,000 and 3,500 eventually. I'm not in any rush. Nice, slow moving gains as we go are fantastic. And most people are not patient enough. If you can be patient, you're going to make a lot of money. Be patient, you will get a lot of good money uh, and make some good trading plans as well. Just stick with it, stick with your patience. Last thing I wanted to chat about, which we covered in the live stream, trading plans. I've got a playlist on the channel which you can follow and learn how to set up your own trading plans, especially through these terrible, scary times if you're a new investor in the last couple of months that can really help you uh, ease the FOMO and ease under, basically ease what's going on in your emotions when it comes to your investing. This has been the most highly mentioned question on my Instagram. So you can join Instagram. I do daily Q and A's over there. You can see my uh, retirement fund portfolio. And so I thought I'd make a video of this on YouTube and then also go live to answer your questions in real time. So I'm doing a wrap up of that and of Instagram. Go follow me over there. Twitter, follow that. That's news updates. And I do a lot more uh, posting over there when it comes to economics and market cycles. This is not just about cryptocurrency because you've got to do something with those profits at the end of the day if you happen to be lucky enough to end up with some profits at the end of this bull market. Crypto debit card, we've looked at that, guys. So if you're interested to store your gains on crypto.com, go and do that. Link in the description down below. You can store it over there. You can earn your interest on the app 10% on your stable coins. Swift Egg Exchange exchanges down below if you want to do any buying and selling. And I've got a free newsletter. Join that. It's entirely free. Cryptocurrency and investing. You can check it out down below. Last thing is the sponsored small caps, the projects that I'm doing on the channel. Uh, some people went crazy yesterday. Uh, it was only a few and most people enjoyed it. You can really see the fundamentals that I'm doing for the projects. And if you're not aware, there are a lot of emails coming through every day. I would say over probably 10 to 12 a day from projects asking to be mentioned on the channel, which I just hit delete to. And the odd one catches my attention. I'll do a bit more research into it. Doesn't mean I am buying it. However, the one for yesterday for Poker City, that is a sponsored project. And I was very critical of it, which you could see in that video. So I want to do my research. It's enjoyable to understand a little more about a project to see if you can find something good. You can, if you don't even want to purchase it yourself, you can go through and have a look at how I'm doing the research on those videos. It's essentially how I'm doing my fundamental analysis. You can learn from something from that. Don't buy the project. No problem. No sweat off my back. If you're going to lose your mind, just skip the video. It was something off Journey Crypto's video today as well. He'd done a sponsored post last week and people lost their mind. Totally get what he's saying, but you, there are dozens of projects which are asking. Some of them look good and I want to do a little more on it because I think the marketing might be okay or the project might be okay. And as small caps, there may be some potential in them and that's where the potential 10, 20, 50, 100 Xs will lie. There's going to be something wrong with them, which is why they are so cheap. It's very far, few and far between, which are fantastic from the get-go. And if they are, they usually sell out drop of a dime and it's very difficult to get in. So we've got to do a little more research into those. I thought I'd just talk about that briefly in the video and wrap it up from that point. There will be some more coming up, definitely more uh, cryptocurrency content, economics coming up. I got some stuff on property cycles. I got some interviews with uh, bigger cryptocurrencies as well. Some of the uh, interesting stuff that you guys have been asking about. So I'm getting onto those. Thank you very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below. You know all the good stuff. Hit that bell notification icon and I'll see you over on Instagram, Twitter or on the free newsletter. Remember until next time, have more fun to get more done.